empowered. Be strong. Take charge. Speak life. Live life abundantly. Get with it now. You are now entering the chat room. Health chat with Coach Gene, that is, where we debate, debunk, educate, empower, impart, and raise awareness on all things related to health, healing, and holistic well-being, body, mind, and spirit. Let's go. Welcome to the chat room, health chat with Coach Jean, that is. I am your host, Jean Turner, and I'm so excited for this opportunity that God has afforded me. If you are on Facebook, go over to the health chat with Coach Jean page to post your comments and questions in real time while we are live. If you are on IG, go to my personal page, FitFoxy50 Beyond, and post under the link that was posted for tonight's show. And if you are on Twitter, go to at chat underscore coach or email me at healthchatwithcoachgene at gmail.com your questions and comments for tonight's show. So many of you may know me and may have even followed some of my health tips I shared on the Inspirational Treasure Radio Show. And you then know my story and my testimony. For those who are hearing my voice for the very first time, I am Coach Jean. First and foremost, the child of God, God's girl. I'm a licensed minister, a nurse for over 33 years, a certified health coach, Army Nurse Corps officer, Iraqi War veteran, author of several books and self-care journals, speaker, blog contributor, wife to the awesome James Turner, who is my best friend, my ride and live partner for life, mom to Lance, Lamar, Jarrell, Sonia, and known as g to the grandkids. So that's me in all my authenticity. And so, look, we're about to kick off this inaugural show with a celebration. What are we celebrating, you might ask? Well, according to the National World Health Observance Calendar, this coming Sunday, June 7th, is National Cancer Survivors Day, a day meant to demonstrate that life after a diagnosis of cancer can be your reality. My special guests tonight, myself included, are living testimonies of this reality. So before I introduce them and we celebrate and salute them and all cancer conquerors, I really don't like to use the word survivors because, one, as believers, we are more than conquerors. And number two, Christ didn't come just so that we could survive. He came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. We were not created to survive. We were created to thrive. Can I get a witness? So, yeah, I guess I just renamed the whole day, right? (laughs) But from this moment on, on this show tonight, we're going with National Cancer Conquerors Day. Tonight, this is who we celebrate. So are you all cool with that? So with that being said, If you're on social media while listening to this live and type, I'm cool with that, or give me a high five. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and pray right now, and then I'm going to bring on my special guest. So, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you right now, dear God. Lord Jesus, humbling myself before you, I ask that you increase, decrease me, that you may increase within me. I pray that everything said and done will bless my guest, our producer, Jerry Royce, and all those who are in radio and podcast land, and pray that someone be encouraged, someone be healed, and someone, dear God's faith, will either, either be ignited or restored. And it's in your precious son's name that we do pray. Amen. Amen and amen. So my guests this evening are phenomenal. I've already dubbed them as a dynamic duo. He is a pastor and advocate for early prostate cancer screenings, and she is the founder of Empower Mint 
That's Empower Mint, M-I-N-T Ministries. But together, this dynamic duo serve as leaders of Power of the Gospel Ministries. They are also hosts of Power Life Live show right here on Positive Power 21 Christian Media. And guess what? They both are cancer conquerors. Pastor and Evangelist Henry, are you in the virtual building? Yes, we are here. Yes, ma'am. We are right here. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we are so How are you doing? Cool. I'm doing good. You know, at first I wasn't hearing anything. I was like, uh-oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> so different. Were... So oh, different. Jerry, like, Jerry, oh, Jerry would have let you know, Jean. Jerry would let you know. Trust me. <laughs> Let me go. But anyway, oh my God. Welcome to the chat room. Help chat with Coach Gene. I am so humbled and honored to share this platform with you both this evening. And thank you so much for being my special guest for this inaugural show on tonight. And so amen. as I Amen. As I said, um, this show is to honor you and other cancer conquerors. I already know that, you know. I already know I'm going to have to have you both back on the show at a later date, and that's because of the testimonies I know you both have. I know they're powerful. I already know. I'm a cancer conqueror myself. I already know I'm going to have to have you both back. But tonight Amen. is celebration of National Cancer Conqueror's Day. This Amen. 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 And I want us to focus on life. You know, living life, abundant life, and that, yes, it is a reality after a diagnosis of cancer. You know, at one time, cancer was a death sentence, but that's not so. And so it is a reality to live life and live it more abundantly after a cancer yep. diagnosis. And also, you know, it is my prayer that someone listening right now who may have recently received a diagnosis who's currently undergoing treatment, as well as the silent partners, you know, the caregivers, that someone be encouraged, um, you know, by hearing um, this show tonight. And were y'all aware that June is also Men's Health Month? No, no, I wasn't. Yes. I, men is oh, also, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, okay. First Lady, you got to say something? I said I, I, do know, I do know it's Men's Health Month. So okay. I do know it's okay. Men's Health Month, so I'm very excited. Yes, yes. And so because of that, I'm going to start off with Pastor Henry. <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Amen. <laughs> and listen, so if you don't mind briefly, would you share with us the type of cancer you were diagnosed with and when you rung the bell? And for those who don't know what ring the bell means, that means that we literally ring a bell signifying our last treatment, which would then indicate the number of years now that you have been um, cancer-free or, according to oncologists, they say, quote-unquote, in remission. So would you share that with us, and then we'll go Amen, on. amen. I, I, would, I would be glad to. I would be glad to. First of all, like, I want to thank you for being on your show. Thank you very much. It's an honor. Um, but I want to say this. Um, I, like most men, especially most black men, I was hard-headed. At, eight, at 50, my wife, thank God for my wife, I went and got a, a physical. Everything was well. The doctor was like, I think, blew my head up, man. For a black man, 50, your pressure, your, your prostate is good. I think it was 1.2, da 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 And I'm like, okay, I am good. I'm 50, and I'm good. And then my wife went back to get her checkup for her cancer, and she said, well, are you going back? I said, no, nah, baby, I'm good. Two years later, no, nah, baby, I'm good. Five years later, no, baby, I'm good. I just kept putting it off. I'm not sick. No, no kind of um, um, no kind of problems as far as what's going on with my health. You know, no pain, no side effects, or nothing like that. So at 57, you know, she actually basically threatened me. <laughs> she threatened me. I have to do now for me. Yes, yes, she threatened me. And um, so I went, and, you know, of course, you know, the normal count is four. You know, you get to 
eight, nine, they start to worry, start looking at you. Well, I went in there and mine was a 19. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. and my and my doctor, thank God for uh, Dr. Um, Sharice um, Wiley, um, thank God for her. And the look that she gave me and the look that I gave her back was like, okay, what's next? But it all stemmed from me not being proactive, me not um, listening. You know, we are hard-headed as men. That's why now I'm an advocate for and I always post it on my Facebook. Every, I'm an Uber driver, and sometimes I just get in men's business. When I say, oh, well, are you man? It's a 50. Oh, guess what? Right. <laughs> you know, have you got your prostate check? And a lot of people are looking at me like, oh, why is y'all up in my business like that? But some people are like, man, thank you, man. I might need to go do that. And I, I just thank God for my wife. I thank God for my doctor. I thank God for the um, Dr. Webster that did my surgery. But the, the key is to, to, to realize this thing is serious. It is a hidden um, disease that um, I know most men are like, oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to bend over. I don't want a doctor to do that. But do you want to live? That's the question you want to ask someone tonight. Do you right. want to live? Okay, and it's very preventive. My doctor is so confident. I mean, my the, my surgeon, my doctor is Dr. Wiley. My surgeon is Dr. Webster. And he was just making jokes. And I was like, I am looking at a death sentence, literally. That's what I was looking at. I was fearful. I was, yeah, I was fearful. The man of God, wow. pastor, preach about faith, preach about all that. I was yeah. literally afraid. I've never dealt with this before. And, but you know what? Right. And I know you're about to talk to ask my wife. But thank God for my wife. She was actually my strength. You know, usually the man supposed to be the strength. She was my strength because she yeah. had been through it 10 years before. You know, and so right. all the procedure that needed to be done, um, a total removal of the prostate, the recovery period, and all that, right. you know, always say, Follow the instructions of those that know more than you. So once mm-hmm. the doctor told me what needed to be done, what was happening, follow the instructions. And so right now, where I'm standing, sitting right now, I'm cancer free. I've been back one, two, three. Yeah. I go back in. in I go back in in June. They take the blood yeah. test, and the last three tests have been zero point zero zero. Undetectable, Amen. you know. So we give God the glory. Yes, conqueror. Yeah, you know, gotta give a, gotta give a clap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I praise the Lord for that. And so yeah. that's where I stand. I stand right now, and yeah. I am enjoying life, and I am, I am just being positive. And people, well, what if it right. come back? What if it come back? We are not speaking that. We're going to speak right. health, deliverance, and victory. Why would I sit here and keep well, right. I'm sitting around waiting for it to come back? No, the right. devil is a lie. Exactly. <laughs> the devil is five lies. I always say the devil is five lies. But we're yes. going to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> we're going to talk about that in a minute because one of the questions later on, we're going to touch on, you know, how do you celebrate life now. But I want to switch gears over to First Lady Henry uh, right now. And, ma'am, if you would just briefly share with us, um, with the audience, because I already know, you know, the type of cancer, when you rung the bell, and how long you've been um, a conqueror now. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am so excited uh, to be here, and I just, we just really appreciate this opportunity um, to be with you on your inaugural um, night. So praise God for that. He is um, good. It was exactly 10 years ago that I was diagnosed. I found my lump on Valentine's Day. My husband and I were preparing to go out to dinner, and I was um, getting dressed, and I felt this knot. It was the size of a pea. Everybody knows how big a green pea is. Mm -hmm. But it was at the top, top portion of my chest, so a couple of inches below my collarbone. Most people do not know that that is considered breast tissue and that you, if you have a lump or a knot in the upper area, anywhere from your collarbone to um, just uh, below where your rib cage is, all of that is considered breast tissue. Whether you're a man or a woman, if there's a lump in that area, you need to get it checked out because men and women can get breast cancer. Um, when I found that lump, I had just gone to the doctor in December for my normal mammogram checkup. Everything was clear. There were no signs of any type of cancer. 
I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, and that is very common in Africa. Um, but my particular uh, breast cancer was growing at the rate of 83%. Mm. And, <laughs> yes, and so wow. by the time I had surgery, um, and, and that's why I'm like, God, what are you doing? What is this go- what's going on? Because the same time my husband, 10 years later, he was diagnosed, he had surgery within the same month that I had surgery 10 years earlier. Man. And what are the odds of both of us having cancer mm-hmm. in the same household? <laughs> exactly. And that's why I call y'all, I have dubbed y'all a dynamic <laughs> duo because mm-hmm. when I went through it, you know, my husband was my caregiver. And so, mm-hmm. I, you know, you both have gone through that, walked through that journey, and you were both, I mean, what is the odds of that, that you both ended up being each other's caregiver? Exactly. What is the like? Have you ever asked your doctors like, what is the odds of that? Is anybody been able to tell you? Mm. That? No one has that told is me the odds of that, but that's I asked God that question because I'm like, God, what is going on? What, you know, what are the odds of this hitting? You know, one family, um, our son that we have together is just like. You know, okay, I, I'm, we're going to do this. I mean, he was very positive because I was very positive when I went through it. So we have to mm-hmm. all um, be positive um, when you're going through, when you're getting a death sentence. Yeah. Um, now, not everybody was positive. Um, but anyways, let me finish my how, what happened. So I had my surgery in April of 2010. Um, went through chemo, went through radiation, praise God. So it's been 10 years. So I'm celebrating 10 years right Amen. now. Amen. 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 Oh, my goodness. Amen. I mean, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I, I tell you, going through that, though, because I uh, last week made a year since I rung the bell. And so Praise when you God. go through that, it's just so many things that's going through your mind, through your caregiver's mind. And, you know, you don't have time to be sitting around listening to negative people. Like, I, I, my circle is very small anyway. My tribe is very small anyway. But it got even smaller because I was not anybody that I knew was negative and wanted to talk about, well, this is what happened to my uncle, granny, father, daddy. I was like, mm-mm, I, you got to be gone, because I, I, I'm not hearing that right now. But Amen. let me pose a question to y'all. Let me pose this question to you. So, you know, we believe that God is a healer. He, well, actually, my testimony and probably yours, too, is he is the healer. So we know God yes, is the is. healer, and um, we know that he uses whatever methodologies, you know, whomever he chooses to accomplish healing. But I also believe that when he heals us, that there's work to be done on our part in order to maintain our healing. And so with that said, is there anything that you do different now from a self-care wellness perspective that you did not do prior to the diagnosis? And if so, what are you doing differently now? Crystal or you, me? Uh, you, you go ahead. She said she was asking okay. both of us, so okay. um, you can go I, ahead first. Okay, well, what, well what, I, what I do now, like I said, I... I I don't miss my doctor's appointment. That's the number one thing. When they give you the date to go in to get your blood test or get whatever is going on, okay, mm-hmm. I, I am there. I'm sitting in the waiting room waiting. So you have to trust the doctors. You have to trust. You trust the Lord. It's no, no brainer. But the Lord will put the doctors in your life that will um, take care of you. So the, what I've changed in my life, because I used to, before the diagnosis, I'd have a doctor's appointment. Even I asked my wife. And the ba- my baby, I mean, my wife said, baby, are you going? To- ah, baby, I'm, I'm fine. I don't need to go. And I just blow off the appointment. <laughs> I just blow it off. Or if I have a call for something, I just, <laughs> were you going to, do, to a care now? Ah, I just blow it off. Now, because of this situation, I am more, let me go, what is wrong? At one point, I had some bleeding um, um, in the private area. Guess what? 
what did we do since Christmas? We packed up. I think the next day they told us to come in and to go to the doctor. Right. You know, for all so long, right. nothing bad. So right now it's more like I'm very, very, you know, um, um, well, we put it like this. I'm, I'm watching my health and anything that's abnormal that I use, they just let slide by or this will go away or this is fine. No, I call my doctor. I have a personal doctor, doctor. That's why I love it, Dr. Wiley. I can call her personally and go, hey, this is happening to me. This is happening, da 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 And that's for the next thing, of course, and my wife, you know, I'm going to blame my wife for this because I'm putting on some weight. You know, I'm putting on some weight because my, my wife be throwing down. Trust me, she cooks. I remember, I see, listen to this, Coach Jean. I feel like I live in a, re- in a restaurant because in the morning it's laid out. And in the noon, they have me laid out. At nighttime, you're hungry? You're hungry? I'm like, oh, my God, okay. You know, so she feeds me. She feeds me well. Amen. But another thing that we are doing also, we, we walk. We get our three miles in, you know, when we do walk, or at least a mile. Yeah, okay. so we do, a, we do walk. She has an exercise thing on TV when it's cold. We do some little stretching stuff on TV. She wakes up every morning and do, and I try to do it with her because I was a really exercise person. But we start doing wow. that, you know, and, of, of course, you read and you study and you, you be aware. So, and then, once again, wow. being proactive as far as sharing with people, sharing your testimony. So that's what I do different in my life now as far as wow. uh, recovering. And you know what, Coach Jean, the, the blessing with mine, with my cancer, um, it wasn't called early, but it wasn't called too late. It was like mid-level, okay. mid-level. And so mm-hmm. I really didn't have to go. That's why my wife is a warrior. She's a, oh, she's a soldier. I didn't have to go through chemo. Uh, didn't have to go no through radiation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, give, I give her her props. I give her props. She, I didn't have to go through, I didn't have to go through all that, you know. And wow. I like, you know, I went through some discomfort with the surgery and, Ten days later with the catheter and all that, it was very, very uncomfortable. But the, I can't imagine what she was telling me about the chemo burning, the taste being out yeah. my mouth, and all that right. stuff. I'm like, wow. Right. You know, so and once again. Never, so, you ever had a thought? Yeah. But, but, but I'm saying it's, 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 it's so, it's, I, I look at her, like I said, as, as, as my soldier, the one that she talked to me. You know, I remember when I got the diagnosis, she's like, ah, I made it. You'll be all right. <laughs> but you know, she, but she, she had, had to, to do that, though. Yes, yeah, she had to do that. She had to do that. So what I've changed in my life, you know, is like I respect her. I, I mean, I love my wife. I respect my wife, but I respect her more once I realize. Mm-hmm. And also, what it has done, Coach Jean, it has helped my preaching. It has helped my oh. testimony. It has Your helped testimony. me as a pastor. Yes, as yes. a pastor. Can, can't nobody look at me now and go, he up there just preaching, and he got the perfect wife, the perfect life, ain't never been sick, nothing that never happened to him. We, this, just, this just springboard our preaching to go, I've been there. I've been through the pain. Right. I've been through the hurt. I've been through the burn. So that's how that has changed our life as far as even as for our Amen. ministry. Yeah, so Amen. that's where I'm at right now. So that's what I've changed in my life, you know, as far Amen. as um, cancer. Amen. Right. Well, I, and I, I see, that's like, what people need to see. They need to see that authenticity, okay? Mm-hmm. They need us in the church, especially the unbelievers. They need to see that we are real and we're authentic. And, yes, we go through things too, you know. Yes. But it's our yes. faith. It is our faith and our belief in God that helps yes, get ma'am. us through. And so yes, ma'am. with that said, um, I know First Lady um, you and you know, Pastor said y'all exercising now. Um, yes. He, he, he said he's eating. <laughs> he eats good in the neighborhood for sure. <laughs> now, some of that I don't have. Some of that is not my fault. Some of that is oh, not my okay. fault. Now I'm a cook. I'm putting in the refrigerator, <laughs> but my uh-huh. son and him take midnight trips to the refrigerator when I sleep. Oh, okay. So G, you, you didn't hear that, so Oh, I heard it. She tallied on you. She tallied on you. And you know what? When you're taking them late trips to the refrigerator, yeah. unless you always eating um, uh, uh, 
fruits and veggies, which hardly have right. zero the, the calories, we can mostly have zero <laughs> calories, and then you go on the bed, we already know the deal. But first lady, I want to ask you a different question, though. I okay. want to ask you a different question. I would like, you know, because going through that, that whole diagnosis and treatment and everything, it changes our perspective and it changes, you know, our outlook on life. So I would like you for the next uh, three minutes or so, share with us what is most important to you now and how you celebrate life now as, as you know, opposed to prior all that you've endured. Well, I would like to say that my relationship with God changed. Um, when I got the diagnosis, I knew that um, this, was, this, this was the real thing. This, this was the real deal. And so I um, dug my heels in, and I was like, okay, God, I'm not fixing to die. So it changed how I dealt with the word of God. Mm. And what I mean by wow. that is um, everywhere around me, I would put the word of God up on my mirrors, in my car, at my desk at work. Um, it would be in my ears at night. I would be listening to prayers or listening to the Bible at night, um, you know, when I'm sleeping. I consumed God's word. And God told me probably the day three after I was diagnosed, he said, breast cancer is a silent killer, but you will mm. not be a silent survivor. Mm -hmm. Woo! So, Woo! <laughs> so that took me to the point where I am at now, no matter what I'm going through. The word of God is always around me. It's, it's always ever-present. Um, so even in the house, when, when, um, we got, when we got on lockdown, I was like, okay. So I started putting my, my scriptures up. My, hu my husband and my son, they looking at me. I got everything taped up because I'm like, now this is my – I work from home. So now this is my home. This is, <laughs> this is right. my place. And so – um, we have our chamber of God, which is our prayer room, our studio, so, you know, and I have scripture all around in the kitchen because now I'm at home, I'm cooking, I'm working from home. Right. There's scriptures on the cupboard. So what, I, what has changed, what I have seen is my relationship with God. And, I mean, that's everything. Hey, now, you better say that. You better say that. And I can relate because probably – Two, between two and three weeks after I started chemotherapy in August of 2018, the, the God, God said so, the, almost, almost ex, the exact same words to me that I need to tell it because I was trying to hide it. Number one, I'm a soldier. Number two, I am a health care provider. Number three, I don't like people in my business. So I was trying <laughs> to hide it. And then, you know, I had my health coaching business I had just started. So I was trying to hide it. I ain't going to lie. But God got me good in church one Sunday morning. Actually, it was the weekend of my birthday, September 2018, and told me I had to tell it. I had to tell it. And so, you know, in so many words, just in different words, but the same principle, you ain't going to hide this. You are not going to hide right. this. And so, you know, I want to run something by y'all real quick. Um, you know, and I had pulled this off the, off the website, um, the National um, Health Observance website, and it says, how do you celebrate life after cancer diagnosis and treatment? And it had 10 things. And, you know, um, I think I know a lot of these apply to me and, and just, you know, which ones apply to you. Pray and deepen your faith, which I mm -hmm. totally heard that from both of y'all's testimony. Be grateful. Support cancer patients and caregivers. Appreciate yeah. mm -hmm. all things. Travel. Mm -hmm which I was the queen of traveling to COVID-19, mm -hmm. live, <laughs> laugh, and love. There you Learn go. something new. Yep. Yes. Learn something new. Treat yeah. yourself and treat yourself often. 
Choose to be positive and don't sweat the small stuff. And I am now the queen of not sweating the small stuff. I don't let nobody rob me of my peace because stress is a big factor in um, yep. cancer diagnoses. Stress mm-hmm. will make a tumor grow and enlarge faster than you can blink. Mm-hmm. And I believe yeah. that was my situation when they found mine. I was under a lot of stress at the time at work and everything. And so what is one other tip that you would share with the listening audience, one from each of you, about celebrating, how to celebrate life after uh, <laughs> healing from cancer? Well, one thing, well, your main thing. Okay, one thing I would say is, one thing I noticed that wasn't in the list is um, do not, ladies, do not, or men, do not put, do not care, watch where you put your cell phone. Because I used to carry my cell phone uh, in my bra, in my chest, up around my mm-hmm. shoulder, yeah. where I got breast cancer, where, I, where the cancer showed up. Um, so wow. Watch where you, even if you're sleeping in the bed, you know, your phone is in the mm-hmm. bed, put it on the nightstand. You don't we're all we're already so phone pro phone. So I'm just saying watch where you put it because cancer might pop up in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pastor Henry, what's one well, thing you would here's, um share? Here's what I would share. Um the Bible said um he, not give, he did, did not give the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. That's what I want to share, power, love, and a sound mind. You have to believe that God had the power to heal you. God has the power to make you a conqueror over this thing, okay? Power, love, the, the people, the caregivers. That's why I shout out to my doctor. I shout out to my surgeon. I, sh- I shout out to my wife, the people that was around you, that helped you and comfort you you know, diagnosed you, did the surgery on you, you have to pray for them because they're going to do that for other people to save other people's mm-hmm. lives. Eh? You know, so power, right. love. you got to love those people. And then the last thing that I would tell people, have a sound mind. Your mind can't mm. be thinking on the negative. Your mind can't be thinking like, oh, the first thing that comes up or something go wrong or, oh, I see blood in my, um, and a cough. Oh, oh I must, the cancer must be coming back. You see, that's the trick of the enemy. So once you come over it, once you have moved over it, you have to. I know you said one thing. I just threw three in there. (laughs) (laughs) You did did on the down low. You did. You, 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 you. (laughs) But but the the, the, I say the main thing that out of those three is is the sound mind. Your mind got to be strong enough to believe what you just said. I'm not just a survivor. I'm not just here surviving. Because when you survive it, you nickel and diamond day by day. When you are conqueror, conqueror, you walking like a king. You walk in life and believe that, yeah, <laughs> that, that you're in ownership, that you own this life, and God has That's given me right. ownership over this life. And mm. cancer is not going to take me out. Christ will take me out when he's ready to take me home. Cancer is right. not going to do it. So my mind is That's sound wonderful. right now. My yes. mind is positive right now. And when yes. you come with your testimony, when you come with your story, your story should be a story of power, love. And a sound mind. And a sound mind. mind. You better say that because you need all three when you going through that journey, let me tell you. That's right. But you know what? Let me tell you, this is a topic near and dear to my heart because I have walked through it as well. And it's definitely a topic that we need to really delve into in the near future because, you know, the realization is this, and this is for really those who may be listening that, haven't never dealt with it, never had to take care of anyone who has um, walked this journey. But there is more to this than just the physical and the pathophysiological effects of a cancer diagnosis and treatment. Mm -hmm. I personally Mm -hmm. don't believe that there's enough discussion on the psychological, emotional, social, and spiritual well-being, mm-hmm. as well as there's not enough attention given to the needs of the caregiver. And so yes. with that said, look, 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 we, I, I got to have both of y'all back on this show, uh, probably be <laughs> separately because I, I just want, it, it's just more that needs, it, it needs to be greater awareness and there's more yes. information that needs to be put out regarding cancer, the diagnosis, the treatments, and just thriving. We have got to know that we, we already know, 
But those out in the audience have got to know it ain't just about surviving. It's about thriving. Now. And there yeah, is yeah. life after cancer. And you have to choose, yeah. like you said, Pastor, you, first of all, you got to be positive. You can't be yeah. walking around in fear, and you got to have a sound mind. Your yeah. mind, you yeah. got to get your mind right, and you got to be in the right mindset. And so I would like to uh, open up the invitation to bring both of you back, Pastor Henry. Oh, yes. If we your are, schedule permits, yeah. yes. Your schedule permits, yes. I would love to bring you back the end of this month, the last Thursday of this month, because I want you to talk more about your advocacy for early screening, signs yes. and symptoms, and that type of thing. So check your calendar and get back with me on that, because no, that wait, will wait, culminate wait, wait. our Coach mental Jean. health month. Coach yes. Jean, Coach Jean, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm not checking yes. the calendar. I'm telling you right now, yes. All right. Okay. All right. I'm gonna hold you to that then. The, Last the Lord, Thursday the Lord, this month. The Lord say the same. And if I'm, I'm here, like Amen. Life, health and strength, we we are there. Amen. Okay. okay. All right. Last Thursday this month. I think that's the 25th, but I gotta check and see the exact date because I really want you to delve deeper into your advocacy. You know, you're now advocate for early screening. Yeah. And we need yeah. to dive more into. Uh, signs and symptoms because a lot of men struggle with getting them prostate exams. Yes. And like I tell the men in my life, I said, look, you're really supposed to start getting them at 40 unless they change yep. something. I yep. know you're supposed to start getting them at 40. So if you're already 41, you late. Okay? Yep. you already late. And so Evangelist Henry, I'd love to bring you back on back in the chat room um, uh, if not sooner, definitely during Breast Cancer Awareness Month because we need to yeah. die, take a deeper That's dive right. into this, this subject. It, it is needed yeah. because every time you turn around, is it just me, but it seems like every time you turn around, yep. you're hearing about somebody else is um, being yep. diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. And so yeah. we really, really, really need to seek God, read our word, and seek what he says about our diet and things that we should be doing because uh, something is just like not not right, not, not kosher. Right. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, something is not right. kosher. And so mm-hmm. I just want to thank both of you for joining me tonight on this inaugural Health Chat with Coach G show. And um, <laughs> oh my God, like I'm going to be look. I'm going to be hitting y'all up as soon as I get off the show tonight. So how okay. about that? <laughs> so be hitting y'all up. So we can get this to emotion, and you know, right, I would right. love to partner with y'all, partner with y'all, even outside of the show, to do more and bring more awareness yes, ma'am. Um, yes, on ma'am. this topic. So I'm gonna be hitting y'all up as soon as I get off the show. So just look yes, for ma'am. it. But thank y'all so so much. I love y'all and appreciate y'all so much for joining me. And um, I, like I said. I'll be in touch in a few more minutes. <laughs> Amen. Coach, Coach, Coach G, can I can I say one more thing before we go? One more thing. I, yeah. I think we got some time. I think we got that seven thirty nine. You know the, the Bible. Well, I uh, I got a. Um, I'm sorry. I just got a health chat. Let you want to stay on? Let me okay. share my health chat real quick. Yeah. My health yes, tip yes, yes, for yes, the week. Okay. All right. So hey, if you or someone you know is currently living with cancer, undergoing cancer treatments, a uh, conqueror or in the words of oncologists, in remission. I don't even like that word. But anyway, mm-hmm. there are many ways that you can continue to take care of yourself. Practice self-care, some self-love, because I yep. believe self-care is self-love. And so number yep. one, eat right. Eat the foods that go. contain a rich source of antioxidants, which is in your fruits and your vegetables. Eat a wide variety of colorful fruits and veggies and have a wide a variety of color on your plate each and every meal and limit if your intake of processed foods. Processed foods I call the devil. Number two, okay. exercise. <laughs> you heard my guest uh, you heard my guest say that they started exercising regularly, getting their walking in. Number three, you've got to maintain your regularly scheduled cancer screening exam. Your mammograms lady, your pap smears, men, your prostate exams. Uh, and so according to medical science, I said according to medical science, not God, according to medical science, mm-hmm. they say that conquerors are at increased risk for a second cancer diagnosis. So it's important to take better care of ourselves. And like I said, self-care is self-love. And so I want to invite all of you personally to check out my personal website. It's www.spiritofawarrior.life. 
to hear more about my journey through my cancer diagnosis and chemotherapy. And I also invite you to check out my book, The Spirit of a Warrior, Gene's Self-Care Journey Through Chemotherapy, and where I share over 20 self-care tips. And so when I tell you I'm very transparent, I am very transparent. And in that book, I was very transparent, which was hard for me as a soldier in the United States Army, as a health care provider, not wanting anybody to know my business. And as a New Yorker, I, you talk about transparent, God just broke me all the way down. And so, but I know it was for his glory because someone else needs to know that they, too, can live life, can have life and live it more abundantly after that type of diagnosis. And so I want to invite you all to join me on my Sunday self-care sessions at 8 p.m. This month I'll be hosting them on June 7th and June 21st on Facebook Live Health Chat with Coach Jean and on my YouTube channel. And so in closing, in closing, uh, I'm going to let you for two minutes Pastor Henry, go ahead and I don't, say. I don't, uh, I don't need that long. Do I don't need that long. Oh, okay, um, cool. <laughs> pride come before destruction, okay? Pride Ooh, come before destruction. Yeah. And the main thing that we have to understand, we have to remove pride away. We have to understand yeah. that we are not doctors. We can't do self-remedies. You know, what you are saying, we can eat. We can eat the right food, drink right, exercise mm-hmm. right, and all that. But when, the, yeah. when things happen in your body and it's not normal, you move your pride out the way and say, hey, doc, here's what's going on. Here, doc, here's, the, here's what, what's happening with my body. So recognize your body because what I figured out, Coach Gene, your body will communicate with you and tell you that something is wrong. Listen to Amen. your body. Listen to when it's speaking Amen. to you. That's it. That's Amen. all I have to say. And, and that's what I tell a lot of my clients and anybody who would listen. You have to be your own patient care advocate. And mm-hmm. being a nurse for over 33 years, that became more apparent to me because that was the first time I ever had to be in the hospital. I've been healthy and well my entire life. You have got to be your own patient care advocate, mm-hmm. and you are right, Pastor. When something don't feel right, smell right, right. look like, <laughs> if it involves your body, don't let nobody else tell you, oh, it's not nothing. Oh, it's exactly. this. Or come back in six months or come back in a year. No. Mm-hmm. Even if that means you got to go elsewhere and get a second opinion because our body speaks to us, the question becomes, are we listening? So yeah, that's amen right. to that. Thank you so much for sharing that because that is so, so true. And so, hey, if um, – you are um, a healthcare professional out there listening in, and you would like to join us here in the chat room. Uh, reach out to me. Email me your name, your credentials, your specialty area expertise, and a phone number and a good time to reach you. You can email me that information at Health Chat with Coach Gene. That's Health Chat with Coach Gene. Gene is spelled J E A N at gmail.com. And next week, kicks off our series on men's health. Uh, Pastor Henry is going to join us the last Thursday of the month, but next week we're going to kick it off with a very special guest. We're going to be talking about men's cardiovascular health. And so, again, I want to give a special shout-out and thanks to my guest this evening, Pastor and Evangelist Henry. And um, I would ask you in the listening audience to check their show out. Their show is right here as well. Um, Positive Power 21 um, Radio. Uh, their show is Power Life. Is that correct? Do I got it right? Power Lift. Power Lift. Power Lift. Okay. Thank you lift. so much. I, I stand corrected. Yes, they are <laughs> on here as well, part of the Positive Power 21 Radio family. So, again, thank you all. Thank you, Pastor and Evangelist Henry. You're thank welcome. you You're welcome. to all in the listening audience. Special thanks to our producer, Mr. Jerry Royce, and the entire oh, yes. Positive Power 21 family. And let me just go ahead and close with this. Self-care is not selfish. Self-care is a form of self-love. God bless you all. And until this time next week, if God says the same, peace and health to you all. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too. Thank you so much. 
Be empowered. Be strong. Take charge. Speak life. Live life abundantly. Get with it now. You are now entering the chat room. Health chat with Coach Jean, that is, where we debate, debunk, educate, empower, impart, and raise awareness on all things related to health, healing, and holistic well-being, body, mind, and spirit. Let's go.